Hey there, YouTube. Mr. Lubufu here with another episode of MTGO Mondays, or Monday Night MTGO, whichever one I'm choosing up with. And here's going to be another Powered Cube Draft. Um, always fun. Ooh. Well, there's this pack, which has one of my favorite green cards in Dra Draga Tree Speaker, one of my second favorite, Noble Hierarch, one of my favorite for Mono Red and Shrine of Burning Rage. But then sometimes there's a Jace. Um, I'm not talking about Baby Jace, I'm talking about Big Daddy Jace, the Mind Sculptor. He does stuff, and he tends to do stuff very well. Um, if Big Jace wasn't in the pack, I would almost certainly take Draga Tree Speaker. This card is basically Soul Ring on a creature, and get out of control really, really, really fast. Um, but, since it's not, Slam and Jace. You don't exactly pass Jace. So this pack has, you know, considerably weaker cards. Um, there's a Bloodstain Mire, there's a Thran Dynamo, and there's Big Daddle Daddy Grizzles. Um, Grizzle Brand, if you take it this early, you can really do a lot of cute things with him. And he is one of the better big creatures to get. Like, otherwise I take, what, a Thran Dynamo? Which is something I like to pick up anyway. But I'm going to take Gristlebrand in the off chance we do something fun with it and do some sort of reanimator deck. Or sneak and show, or, or sneak and just sneak attack, or show and tell, or anything cute with Gristlebrand. Otherwise we don't lose too much from this pack, but like we lose a Bloodstained Mire. Or like nothing too bad. So I'm going to take it. If we lose, if we lost a pick on it, we lost a pick on it. Um... So this pack's also pretty pretty weak. Like there's tendrils if you want to go storm. I don't think I want to go storm. We could try and force it this early and just get rid of Gristle Brand and just play Jace as a value guy. There's also a Signet. Um, Earthquake is pretty solid and cute. There's a Trinket Mate that we can't fetch anything with, and just assuming we're gonna get it. Um, I could go storm. I'm not sure if I want to. Like you have to go in really hard for storm, and if you don't get it, you don't get it. But really, what else is there? Like, I'd take a Signet, really, if I didn't. Yeah, let's go deep. No, yes, no, yes. Hardest part about Powered Cube for me is being indecisive. I am going to try and force it and see what happens. Take the best. This is one of the better Storm cards. Well, this is... If you're going Storm, Time Spiral is the pick. If not, Reanimator wants Animate Dead. Eureka is good with Grizzlebrand as well. There's also a second Jace, but I'm gonna go deep on the Storm plan um, and get a Time Spiral. Um, certainly helps with that, and it does a lot of cute, cool, and broken things. So just gonna take it and see where we go from here. So Turnabout, another another card that goes decently well in it. Inquisition's also fine. Um, as just sort of disruption. Corpse Dance, good with Reanimator again, but I'm going to take this turnabout and uh, see if we can pick up a couple more cards to finish this off. But I'm going to get the turnabout, and we're looking on like it's open. It's just a matter of finishing it off. So here, like when you're going the Storm deck, um, you typically want to have pretty good mana. So I can pick up a Wooded Foothills or a Shivan Reef. You're probably going... Uh, Grixis or some variation of that. Um, I think I'm just gonna take the Shivan Reef over Yavimaya Coast or Wooded Foothills. Wooded Foothills might be able to be better than Shivan Reef, but I think I'm just gonna take it just to be on the safe side. There is a Pilgrim, there's a Forbid, but I'm gonna see if I can force the Storm deck here. It's Swiss, maybe we can get there with it. Basically, what we want to pick up is just. Um, a lot of cheap spells, so Lion's Eye Diamond, and just cheap mana, and then the Storm ability, so Tendrils is one, we gotta pick up a couple more. Like, this pack's actually pretty empty, for, like, if you're going Storm, um, there's a Soren, which is good, in Esper, there's Grand Arbiter, which might be worth it, with these sort of spells, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this, we should abandon the Storm plan or not. I'm just going to take the Grand Arbiter and see if we can play with that. So far, we're looking pretty... We're lacking kind of a good card. Like, we picked up the Tendrils, 
and Time Spiral. Turnabout's only okay in this sort of deck. So we might have to just jump ship and be a blue deck with Jace. And uh, see where it goes from there. That's the thing about Storm, is you gotta really commit to it if you go for it. Okay. So this pack has kind of lackluster cards when it comes to Storm. There's a Lotus Cobra, which is fine. There's a Shadow Mage Infiltrator, which could just take and go some sort of Esper deck. Because we haven't seen any of the pieces, really. So I'm just going to pick up Shadow Mage Infiltrator to see if we can go something else and just jump ship. Unfortunately, our deck is kind of bad now. So that's a thing. Um... But sometimes when you're doing these sort of cube drafts, you end up in a perilous position for trying to do something fun. And that seems to be my position right now. Like if I had seen a brain freeze or um or uh mind's desire or anything like that, like we would have been okay. This should not still be in the pack. Or this. Mancer's fine. I'm just gonna take a tree speaker. Um I'm okay with going some sort of blue green deck. And Tree Speaker is probably, as, as I said, if Jace the Mind Sculptor wasn't in the pack, I'd take it. It is a signal right now that green is open. So I think we're just going to build a decent, just green-blue deck. Maybe black? We'll see. Um, kind of sucks to have to jump ship on the Storm plan, but sometimes, sometimes your dreams have to be crushed. I'm not exactly hiding these cards yet, just on the off chance that the second pack just has everything. Or we're looking for just value cards to trigger with Storm, but we need more tutors and that sort of thing. Otherwise, you know, this, this is only okay. So Dungeon Geists and Blood Blinky are still in the back. I'm just going to take Dungeon Geists. It's blue. We're... Almost certainly playing blue. The rest of the cards really don't matter. Um, not a lot of green, but I didn't really pay attention to what was in the pack because I was trying kind of trying to be cute with Grizzlebrand and tendrils. So we'll see. We'll see what we've got. A lot of a lot of directions we can go. Currently, this first pack is as much of a train wreck as you can probably get, though. To be completely honest. And it's good to know that I'm completely willing to accept when I know that a deck is bad. Unfortunately, being able to draft better might be important. Awakening Zone, more than playable in green-blue. Better than Will Bender, I think. Earthquake is actually a very powerful card in um, the cube. People underrate it a lot. If you have the mana to back it up. Jeez. People don't like Planeswalkers, or apparently don't like Jace. Planeswalkers are very good in cube, so it seems like we're just going to be a blue-green deck. Um, take out any fun cards and, and just go solid blue-green. That card's good. I'm just going to take the Domi right away. It should not still be in here. Restock's also fine if you're playing... I, I'll take Restock first, actually, rather than just hate a Domi raid. Um, sure, I'll take a Quarter Calling. It seems like it might be green blue. Restock actually does go well in the Tendril deck. Um, but I don't think the Tendril deck is going to happen. I think I'm okay with just being a green blue deck. Planeswalkers should not be last picked ever in a cube draft. Planeswalkers are some of the more powerful effects you can get. So right now we're definitely blue. I would like to be green. Um, since it seems like the Storm play, like getting Jaces and drawing cards to be able to do Storm is fun. But I, th I think someone else is doing it, so I'm just going to stay out. There's someone else who's doing a reanimator, too, since none of the reanimator cards tabled, obviously. Um, so this is, this is interesting. It's pretty bad, but interesting. Then there's this pack, where there's a lotus, and we just take the lotus. Though, if I table Preordain, or Watery Grave, or Marsh Flats, or Garrick, 
um, I'll be happy. Curl Mox even is okay, but sometimes you just gotta take a Lotus. I regret not having a Trinket Mage now, but turn one, land Lotus Jace, probably pretty good. I definitely think it's what I'm gonna pick up here. For obvious reasons, Black Lotus one of the more powerful effects in Power Cube. Ancestral Recall, you know, also up there. Soul Rain, that sort of thing. But now, now we have a decent thing. So, push as we go, like, uh, blue, black, green. Ooh, this pack has so many good cards. So many good cards. This card is great to build around. I love Sword of War and Peace. Oh, we don't have the creatures for it. There's Control Magic. There's Thrun. There's Harmonize. There's yeah, Goik's only okay. I don't consider it that high. And there's a Volcanic Island. Um, if you want to go that direction, I'm just gonna take Control Magic. It's really good. Stealing their best creatures is often a two for one. I have a deep seated love for Control Magic. Um, so I'm gonna take it. Hope that one of these other cards tables and just take take it and be really happy, really, with what's happened. Um. Regret passing the sword because there's a click here. We also obstinate Bailoth and Drain Shermit. Purple Primus is okay. Maelstrom Pulse if we're legitimately green black. If we're actually playing it, like we only know we're in blue. We don't know our second color yet, though. I'd like it to be green. There is a Signet, which is fine as well. I could just get a click. Um, play a, a tempo-y sort of deck. Okay with spin and click. Okay, so it seems like I have a general direction. I'm gonna hide this restock, hide this tendrils, hide this time, uh, this creature, hide the time spiral probably, and hide the turnabout. If we're going rug, we have a shadow mage infiltrator. Probably not playing this Captain Gristles, but you never know. Though this seems like a decent start, to be completely honest. Hmm, that is a very good card. That card should not be here this late. Coalition Relic's very good. I love picking up Shardless Agent more than most people, to be completely honest. Um, but I think Coalition Relic is just the card we want. Um, so I'm going to take it, and I'm going to be like, Hi guys, I have a Coalition Relic. It's going to help Rampy into stuff that I'm going to pick up. Not much else to say, really. Um, we only know we're blue and I'd like to be green. Um, it seems like blue is pretty open. Like a late Jay's Architect of Thought is kind of a signal. Okay, so this pack has a card that I don't think we can take. Talarian Academy. There's Mana Leak. There's an image. I'm just going to take the Mana Leak. It's surprisingly powerful and cute, but Dazzle Image is pretty good too. Um, but I think we're going to be more controlling the early parts of the game, and I think Mana Leak's going to just do more work than Phantasm Image, especially with the change to the Legendary Rule. Phantasm Image lost a lot. Sylvan Library is another powerful card. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to take away anything from that. But I think Mana Leak's more what this deck wants. Yeah, we have we can get card draw, but we have that sort of thing already in a, in these blue planeswalkers. I think being able to stay alive, get tempo in the early game, um, is more relevant than being able to just finish by having board presence in planeswalkers. So maybe picking up a wrath might be okay. I, the damnation is gone. Jeez, do we go white instead? Like okay, so one of the best black creatures. A decent removal spell. And then there's Elspeth. And I think I think I just go Elspeth here. Just go Bant. I think Elspeth is powerful enough, and we have Grand Arbiter to help slow stuff up. Yeah, I'm gonna take an Elspeth. Elspeth, very good. Wave is also powerful, but I think I'm just gonna take it and go Bant. Now I need to pick up better Whew. Etherling versus Glen Alendra Archmage versus Findhorde Elves. I think we have to skip on the elves. I think I have to take Glen Alendra here. Etherling? 
very good, and it is it is a finisher in a cre in creature form. I just take Etherling. I think I just take Etherling here. So many decks just lose if we if we resolve an Etherling, and I think ours is the type of deck that if we resolved one, we probably win. Kind of rough. There's a Pelucranos here. It's also Academy Ruins, which Academy Ruins Lotus is a thing. Do I just take Pelucranos? It's just a big 5-5. Five five. Another creature that can gum up the ground. Academy Ruins only triggers with Lotus. I'm just going to take Pelucranos. This is cute, but I think I need a little bit more creatures after we lost so many picks. Well, Garrick did table. So it looks like we're doing Bant Planeswalkers. Chancery is fine. I would have liked to get it. But now we're going to just start prioritizing um, fixing. And I love that our four drop slot is kind of heavy because of this Black Lotus. Feels kind of bad, but turn one, any Planeswalker, any one of these three is probably game. So here we can take a Goyf or a Thrun. Devil's Play is also very good too. I'm sad it's here. We can take Harmonize as card draw. I think I'm just going to take Goyf. Like we have already a four slot. This is not that good in cube, mind you. But I think I'm going to take it over Thrun, just as an early creature that can sort of gum up the ground. Take Primal Commander and Obstinate Veiloth. I don't think Aeon Chronicler is the best for our deck. Target player shuffles library. Could take Primal Command. I think I'm going to take Primal Command. I need to pick up more early stuff, but I think I think our 4-drop slot's pretty full. Shardless Agent, a card I'd love to pick up. It's only okay, like, Charlie's Agent, Tree Speaker, Goyf, and Lotus are fine. Mana Leak's not as powerful, but I'm going to pick it up. Um, take a Sideboard 92, go Vigilante. Eternal Witness or Garrick? I'm going to take Eternal Witness over this Garrick, just because we don't have many creatures. And Eternal Witness, like Black Lotus or any of our other spells, seems quite powerful. Okay, so I need to pick up Fixing pretty badly to be completely honest let's see what we have here nothing too insane there is a show and tell but i think our show and tell thing like since we have so many planeswalkers show and tell that ship has sailed unfortunately there's no fixing legitimately for us we could take a voice as just a creature we could take a chalice for more ramp this pack is pretty empty as a whole um, I think I'm just going to take Voice. Sucks we have to pass this show and tell. Um, we could play Gristles in it, but I think I need to pick up another creature for the early game. It helps stabilize us a little bit better. Call of the Herd is also fine, but we could take Chalice, but I think I'm just going to take Voice. So we can continue on the Planeswalker plan, or we take Moat and make people really, really, really sad. Like this card, Dex can't beat. I'm going to take Tamiyo just because... Oh, it's another Planeswalker. But Moat... Oh my god, Moat is so good in this deck. We just dirtle, dirtle, dirtle until what? How do we win? Ultimate Planeswalkers, really? Okay. Elspeth plus Moat. It's done. Boom. Maybe we table Arborel for Oran Viper. Tamiyo is fine. It's not got table, but I'm going to take Moat. So many Planeswalkers. There's the Lion's Eye Diamond I mentioned if we were going the other deck. Vencer does broken, broken, broken things. Um, oh, that's a Pwing. Um, taking the Vencer, and we have all the bl banned Planeswalkers I could want. Sorry, Elspeth. You have to, you have to sit on the sidelines on this one. Um, so we can take Breeding Pool, or Flooded Strand, or Mystical Tutor. What does Mystical Tutor do? Instant or Sorcery. So Leak for really nothing. So Mystical Tutor doesn't do anything. So we can get Flooded Strand or Breeding Pool. I think I need the Breeding Pool more than I need the Flood Strand. Yeah, I think I need the Breeding Pool more than I need the Flooded Strand. There is a Blade Splicer, which is fine in the early game too, but I think we should take the Breeding Pool here. Well, we get a counter spell. Nothing to complain about. These other cards are red. 
lots of red. So, okay, so this deck sort of came together in the end. It's very, very greedy. I'm not playing this Court of Calling, by the way. Um, it's very greedy. Probably not playing this Tracker either. But it has Planeswalkers. And Planeswalkers do stuff in Cube. Typically win. Let's see, what does Venser trigger? Exile target permanent. Ooh. There's a the sword. Trigon Predator is actually not bad. And a Hollowed Fountain. I think I'll just take the Hollowed Fountain here. Trigon Predator is fine. Green Sun Zenith doesn't fetch anything busted in our deck. Vernon Catacombs does get the breeding pool. But I think I just need I just need this Hollowed Fountain. Fixing is important in cube. Fixing is muy importante. Oh, that is the wrong button. That is the wrong button indeed. Okay, so here, this card is very good. This card's also pretty good. This card's also good. I mean, if we're going Planeswalkers, we just take the pr Primal Hunter. I don't know how many fourths we're going to pl be playing for Rafelos, but I think Rafelos is just broken enough to work. And I think Triple Green is pushing a little bit much. Rifting Clouds get another good card I like to pick up. Um, so I'm just going to take the Rafelos. And be content with it. We could take Plow Under, we could take Days. Neither one is, like, Plow Under is a card I love to pick up. I think I'm just going to take it. But I'm not going to do anything fantastic with it. I could take the Days in the off chance that we do it, but I think stalling ourselves is worse. It's also important, like, so let's see, what other things? Venser, Dungeon Geist. Pelucranos fight stuff, Venser bounce Pelucranos, Eternal Witness Venser, doesn't work with Cascade unfortunately, Venser with any Planeswalker, like Jace minus two, Venser bounce him, Venser bounce our moat, we get to attack, and then have the moat come back, I absolutely love Venser and Cube, I think there's something broken with it. Just does so many stupid things. It lets you get to minus eight so, so fast. This was our original pack. Didn't have anything too broken. I'm going to take Catastrophe as just a Wrath effect. It's very slow, though. It's no Day of Judgment, no Wrath of God, nor Supreme Verdict or anything like that. Probably not going to make the main deck, though. So let's see. How do I want to play this? So basically, our goal is like moat lock them and then just play planeswalkers. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna go with it. Well, the Arbor Elf did table. A um, little bit more ramp, never hurt. There's an Oran Viper, but I think I definitely want this Arbor Elf. So Arbor Elf, Tree Speaker, Rafellos, plus Lotus, Coalition Relic. The possibility of turn one Jace the Mind Sculptor. Um, can do silly, silly things. I was hoping one of the fetch lands would table, but I don't think it's gonna be the case, no. Nothing here I care about. I'm just gonna take an Exalted Angel, I guess. Probably not gonna play it, just because it's very intensive on the white. Um, and I only really want to play extensive on the white cards with, like, Moat Elspeth. Probably won't even play Grand Arbiter in the main. Take out, take out these lands. Um, that and that are still in the pack. We would go super deep, but I don't think we want to go super deep. I'm just going to take Wolfier Silverheart. This was the pack with all the red in it. I'm just going to take the Bogart Ram Gang. Dragon Predator Tabled. I'm actually going to take it. There's a lot of artifacts in this cube, and I'm 
considering even mainboarding Trigon. Just you get it, you get an attack in, and people are like, oh, my good artifacts, whatever shall I do? So this pack, or this deck is a thing. Bugari Rock Farm. We could have splashed the Braska if we were super greedy, but I think this is already pretty, pretty rough on the mana. It's really rough. I'm basically going base blue-green, and then I'm adjusting from there. Probably not playing that one. I'm going to play Goyf just as another creature, really. Blue Kronos. We're going to see if we cut one of these five mana. Um, the five mana random spells. Not playing Turnabout. Definitely playing Ether Lane. And then Moat, Elspeth are coming in. I could play Exalted Angel, but I'm trying to be a little bit more nice on my mana. Just see what we have here. Okay. So you have to make a couple of cuts. Right now we have 28. I'd probably like 20. Uh, I want to have like 16, 17 lands, something like that. I think the first cut here is probably the Grand Arbiter. He does cute stuff, but I don't think that having an extra white source in our decks that necessarily powerful. Moat, Benser, and Elspeth make it worth it, I think. Playing those two, of course. Um, Voice could come out next. Again, we're not going to have much white in the deck. Voice is a good card, yes. Let's see, what can Shardless Agent Cascade into? Tree Speaker, or Raphelos, or Goyf, or Arbor Elf, or two counter spells. That seems really risky, and Lotus. I'm going to take out the Shardless Agent. And take this, and that puts us at... Probably one more cut to be safe. I think we're just going to cut the Primal Command. Search your library for a creature, reveal it. Like, this would only search up Aetherling, really. Or gain 7 life. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with this. Um, add the lands. 5, 3, 6. Plus a Hollowed Fountain and a Brooding Pool. So that's 4 white sources, plus Lotus, plus Relic. That's kind of risky, but I think I'm going to go with it. As I said, this is very greedy just because we jumped up to this train very late. I kind of... The, the, the pieces were sort of there, but not... Not really enough to make it work. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and keep your eyes open for the next part.